Hey everyone. So I did a psychic reading on Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. And I already, you know, went into meditation and wrote everything down. And I, I just wrote it all out as it came to me. So I'm just going to be rereading what I wrote down while I was in trance um, doing a psychic reading on Vladimir Putin. So here we go. When I tuned into him at the moment, at that time at least, his energy appeared to be a very dark, dark blue. Um, I saw him lustfully checking out a high class woman. She is calling him closer. There's some sort of agreement um, where he must spoil her with riches in order to be with her. And she came across as being kind of like a temptress, kind of like tempting him sexually on some level. Um, and he is doing business in order to be able to be with her or be near her. He must always be on his toes in order to be in good enough terms with the male-dominated world in order to be good enough in being successful for her to earn her on some level, to sustain her. Um, and on some level, I saw him kind of checking her out like from a distance, kind of like stalking her, like keeping an eye on her and just watching her. And he's securing his power, his position in society in order to have her. But I didn't really see him in particular closing in on her as much. It wasn't like he was trying to get closer. It was more like he just kind of wanted her within his you know, grasp to just kind of maintain his security over her. Um, he leaves to go secure secure the borders, and to me this was um, representing the economy um, in order to preserve his power. And she is a spectacle to him. Of course, I do see things um, literally as well as through symbols, so this, I don't think this is such a literal situation. It's more like kind of explaining the situation um, going on with him. He does business just to get back with her in the same room. I see him working with bankers and someone associated with the jail system in particular. Um, these are not completely honest people or transactions. They're sort of like the stock market, but more on a secretive level in the sense of, you know, controlling the flow of money. Normal people do not know the movement of money and power that he controls. On some level, he feels like Batman and can act the role to some extent in his character portrayal. That's just kind of how he thinks about himself, how he feels about himself on some level. He controls money exchanges to keep the economy afloat that are secret and have almost, he has almost a James Bond feel to it. Um, this money has to do with the money of the rich going to the poor who need it just enough to make them satisfied, <clears throat> but not enough to give them any more than is necessary. I mean, so he's, he's not giving people, it's like a careful, delicate balance between just giving people enough money to get by and to be satisfied, but not any more than that. And this is an important balance to him to keep reserves and back up for more stability on his part. It is a delicate balance. He also doesn't want to give too much because it could allow an uprising from those who get it because money on some level is power and if you have more money, you're able to, you know, do more things is the way that he sees it. Um, he is a very disciplined man. 
I see him partying with wine and living a very high class lifestyle, which is very important to him. He feels it is necessary as a source of fuel to keep him going and a way of balancing his life to make it function properly. He is not interested in sharing this with those who do not live up to his standards and do not share his importance, thus deserving this necessary fuel. I saw him like literally closing the door on someone like standing out in the rain looking in. You know, like, I don't have time for you. <laughs> social life is very important, although there are different sectors to social life, to his social life. He has different sections of social interaction and may cross over with the same people. Like, the same people may overlap different social sectors of his life, but the interactions are in a different context. And while partying, it is in that manner and business is in a different manner, and then personal desires and attractions are of a different section, not to be overlapped, regardless of whether or not those individuals may some, sometimes overlap. If an important message is sent from someone in a private moment at a party, it is done so discreetly without anyone else being involved. Making a scene is not part of his lifestyle. Everything is discreet. I see a scene where a woman at a party sends him a message, but she is mad at him for ignoring her by, so, by discreetly handing him her panties and then walking away with a group of other women so he can know what he is missing. Of course, this may not have literally happened. This is probably more symbolic, to, but it, it's possible that it could have literally happened as well. Even though it is in plain sight, if people comment on it, it is only a quick moment in which it is geared towards changing the subject back to the social dynamics of the scene. In other words, situations like that, people may whisper something to each other very quickly, very discreetly, but they're not going to you know, make it a public conversation about it. There's a lot of gossip and discussion around business matters, sports, competition, and stories of who will survive and who is not going to, and this can be literal or within the terms of surviving economically. Putin is a very quiet man of very few words or no words, almost James Bond-like. I see him using a lot more like body language than like actually using his words um he is constantly making moves on women behind the scenes and not to be discussed publicly um although again these are like very subtle moves that he's doing they're not like very open um he's not really saying much it's just like kind of subtle body language and um, behaviors and actions um, that could be easily dismissed as you know nothing I guess you could say there is a lot of secret drama going on that does not always work in his favor that there is never an emotional scene acted out only strategy and this is with him and the people that he associates with social interactions are full of strategic actions of meaning to those who may be around to witness it, such as who is talking to who and if someone looks at you with a subtle body language. I do not see Putin going for sex so much as going for impressing the girl. He's not doing so well at the moment in that department. He seems to be depressed regarding his relationship with women. Um, Things are very complicated for him in regards to that. He seems to almost put more focus on that than world affairs, but still knows how to take care of world, world affairs due to his connections. And this is like on a very personal level, like when he's in his own thoughts, not like when he's behaving or acting in society, like on a very personal level. He knows a lot of people behind the scenes, 
these are like having connections to the mob and being a high level drug dealer, but it is dealing with the economy rather than drugs. Even if what he is doing is legit on some level, which I'm not sure it is, but it's possible you could say that, it still has this mob kind of criminal vibe to it. I don't see him having a direct connection to Donald Trump, but I do see a connection through his network of people. It looks like there is some agreement between them of some sorts, that's between Trump and Putin, like indirectly. They agree to be allies, but Putin doesn't seem very interested in Trump. This is kind of behind, this is like more like on an individual intentional level that isn't necessarily going to be portrayed in the news. Trump seems more interested in Putin. So Putin's not, not interested in Trump, but Trump is more interested in Putin. Trump wants to work with Putin, but Putin doesn't care or have any time to waste on any deals with Trump. Putin's people, through his secret network, will do that for him, and to some degree makes the shots without Putin. That is, connecting with Donald Trump, even though it may be on a level where Trump isn't even fully aware of what's going on. But it is in all in alignment with what Putin is doing. There is some sort of economic plan, but there are variables that don't matter and can go either way depending on what works for strategy. These strategies are not always under Putin's command, and he honestly doesn't give a damn about Trump. Trump is being influenced by Putin's network in some manner, though. He is being manipulated into going along with Russian interests, even if he doesn't realize it. Putin leaves it up to his network of people to figure out what to do and how to execute these plans, and he doesn't really care too much about being involved or knowing the details. This has something to do with oil and Russia making profit off of it. Also, something came up about windmills in relation to Trump. I do not see that Trump works for Putin and takes direct orders straight from Putin, as some psychics have seen. So I have heard psychics say that Putin, or yeah, Putin is like the boss of Trump, and he just takes orders from him. I'm not saying it's quite that, um, but I do see him noticing Putin's economic control and working with it in some regards. You could say he is working alongside with his plans and capitalizing off of it, but he is not taking direct orders directly from Putin. Trump, however, does feel he has to go along with certain indirect orders, if you want to call it that, from Putin, and there is a connection but I see a possibility of him disobeying as well. He is afraid to do so, though, but he would if Putin compromised him. There is an alliance between them, however. I do see Putin having some ability to control Trump with a decision by having him trapped in some manner through networks of people, and I would add in the economy, uh, economic or foreign policy pressures, uh, just... Um, situations within the world that kind of trap him on some way. There is some unspoken threat towards Trump from Putin, either economically or through his personal finances or networks of people that could force him to react a certain way, but only in regards to specific economic situations. So it's not like they have con complete control over him or anything like that. It's just you know, here and there they have their levers they can pull. This could be in regards to keeping the peace and preventing a war between different countries that may or may not involve the US, which is why Trump may be controlled to do certain things to kind of keep the peace. Um, I do not see Putin directly involved in hacking Hillary Clinton's emails. So not Putin directly. Although his orders may have been vague, like destroy Hillary Clinton, because I do see him having that bias towards Hillary Clinton, and then hackers in his country may have done what they did based on that. It appears to me that Hillary may have 
broken some sort of rule among world leaders behind the public eye or some sort of agreement, um, maybe unspoken. Putin and others competing with her in the globalist game see her as trying to take advantage of them or taking advantage of just like the system that they kind of all had laid out that generally they would expect most people to kind of abide by. She was trying to use the democratic power of her followers to overpower the behind-the-scenes agreements with powerful people in this globalist network. These agreements were to work with Putin and other global networks and follow the rules they have agreed upon for foreign policies. She was thinking she could break old standing agreements that may have been somewhat unspoken but expected codes of conduct. I do not see this as her trying to topple this world power, but more so simply to establish her power as a power player in the globalist game, as a world leader, you could say. I do not see Trump being selected by Putin directly to be president, as many have claimed, but more so Trump happened to fit into the policies being pushed by world powers, including Putin. So maybe at some point he was kind of agreed that he would be a good candidate, but I don't see it being like some planned out thing far in advance, in other words. Trump just happened to fit the bill, so to speak. I do not see Vladimir Putin directly changing votes for Trump's election, but I do see him putting money down in some regard to help Trump in the election. It's not like he did anything necessarily illegal, but he did invest in Trump winning somehow. It looks like money went to support things that support Trump indirectly in some manner, although this is less direct than a political donation. Putin simply invested in who he liked and then turned his back to him and ignored him. Trump doesn't owe Putin anything and doesn't feel that Putin did much for him being elected. There are many other factors at play besides Putin. It is all politics. Trump doesn't want to crumble away their good, decent, standing relationship. There seems to be some economic relationship between Trump's policies and Putin's that Trump would rather not break for his own political financial benefit. This looks like oil and foreign policy is involved. I see Putin working with many world leaders, even the Queen of England. And I keep saying the Queen of England in a lot of readings, and I'm starting to wonder if the Queen of England is a literal thing, or if the Queen of England just means England or European countries. I'm still not 100% sure on why I keep saying her over and over. Maybe it really is her, specifically. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, I see Putin somehow associated with the Queen of England. Um, he has many wealthy connections with the elite around the world. He is pulling some strings, but not only regarding the flow of money and policies around the economy. Um, oh, sorry, he is pulling some strings, but they're, they're not like, he doesn't control everything. They're only regarding the flow of money and policies around um, the economy specifically for his country. He is always looking for a way to gain more personal security. He is willing to work with very high pro profile people in order to secure these relationships and possibilities. He is a man of making deals, somewhat behind the scenes that may not always be public information, or it may simply be so often that it is not anything to raise an eyebrow about or catch anyone's attention continuously floating through a sea of high-profile individuals. I see a lot of influence in European countries. He may lie about his whereabouts or the purpose of his interactions and purpose behind them. I do not see him messing around with Africa, but could mingle with Asian territories to some, to some small extent, although I'm not 100% sure that's going on at all. He is not interested in the U.S. except through his networks of people who may or may not be spies in the U.S. Probably they are. <laughs> Putin is a very calm man, almost silent, and I see Trump in comparison getting angry and wanting to yell at him to talk to him and get past the wall between them. 
but Putin is so calm and detached it pisses Trump off. Putin is dominant over Trump energetically. His unwillingness to change his stance or be swayed by Trump, make Trump makes Trump feel lose his marbles. <laughs> makes him mad. This is, of course, not going to be something that the news will be picking up on, I don't think. Putin is like a ghost. He is near a crime scene, but always gets out of the area unscathed and without any emotional hiccups. Nothing seems to faze him. He is very businesslike and may be Trump's match, which infuriates Trump. But we will never see that side of Trump. And Melania would only even get a glimpse at his emotions regarding this without ever really understanding the situation either. Putin is detached and mob-like in his behavior. He may have a family, but is not a family man. He is more invested, and I don't actually know anything about his family. I don't know if he has kids or what. I, I honestly don't know. Putin is detached. Okay, sorry, I already read that. He is more invested in his business, and his business is woven into his indulgences and in life which would completely take over any family relationships. Business comes first, social connections second, and family is third, maybe shared with personal indulgence. He doesn't seem to want to drink to excess. Like I did see him partying, but I don't see him being a, a boozer. He wants to indulge in the high-profile lifestyle, though, which does come along with that, but he's not drinking himself to intoxication. He wants security and wealth. I do not see him changing or doing anything different anytime soon, although I see a desire to simplify his life and settle down to some extent. And this is in the future. This is like his future ambitions, what he wants going forward. He wants to be the keeper of secrets and precious possessions that he may impress and share with others who are in his life such as possible children of his or related to him. I don't particularly see him having children. I could be wrong. I, I don't know anything about his personal life, though. He seems very alone to me. Um, he wants to be able to spoil those he cares for to secure his connection. He enjoys being a man of mystery. His foreign policy is that of a chess game. He has many possible moves but no particular game plan. He just plans on pulling in whatever he can, similar to an investor investing in the stock market. He is a strat strategist. He is using strategy, very calculated, always watching with a sobering silence. I do see connections to high-profile people and European government, but he is not entirely trusted by them. Although he is allowed to be close to them and make deals behind closed doors with them. These are plans of cooperation through economic actions. And this is specifically European governments. This will allow the bigger countries to continue to dominate while they strategize together to take more control over the world economy by excluding smaller countries out of their plans like Asian countries, despite his minor willingness to consider working with them, although I don't really see him particularly working with Asian countries overall. Again, there is this connection with the royal family that seems to be coming up, which may be literally the royal family or it could just represent Europe. I'm not 100% sure. He inf I don't want to jump to conclusions here. He influences those who are powerful within business, and who may affect government around the world. Very influential. He would take advantage of any country without hesitation, but enjoys the allied support of Europeans and therefore also respects those relationships. He does not particularly like the U.S. and sees it as he sees protesters in his own country. He sees them as a little out of control and a danger to the organization of power that he represents. He is hoping that the U.S.'s chaos causes the U.S. to stamp itself out and come back down to more predictable foreign policy that he can strategize around. He is not a fan of revolutions or anything he sees as emotional reactions. 
he strikes me as having characteristics of a Scorpio Capricorn nature. Well, he might not be either of those signs. So I actually, after I did write this down, I actually did look up his astrology. And what I found was he has Venus in Scorpio. So there's a Scorpio. He does have it. Um, rising sign is in Scorpio. His sun sign is not Scorpio, but his rising his sun sign is in the rising sign of Scorpio. Um, uh, his moon sign is Aquarius in the house of Scorpio. Um, so there's a good amount of Scorpio. As far as Capricorn, Capricorn only shows up once as being the house that Libra is in within his Mercury sign. So his Mercury is in Libra, which is in the house of Capricorn. Regardless, my reading reminds me of those traits in the sense of wanting to put up castle walls like a Capricorn is said to. In the sense that he's trying to gather this wealth and he's trying to, you know, secure himself. And in some sense, kind of like build these castle walls around him to you know, protect him. Um, especially in regards to the situation with him trying to, you know, be a, around women. He doesn't care for North Korea or becoming a allied with any other forces, although if he could with the U.S., he would. So he would become an ally of the U.S. if he could, but it's not really in his interest, doesn't seem like. Even though he would secretly want to weaken the U.S.'s power and take advantage of it. So even if he did, you know, he would be you know, under the table trying to weaken the U.S. He seems to be involved with religion that looks Catholic in nature to me, and that brings him satisfaction in life. It is the cherry on top of discipline and good business that makes him feel like the sun is shining on him. That is religion. And it's kind of not necessarily religion as much as tradition, um, but it seems like religion, religious tradition, I guess you could say. He wants to honor his mother or possibly grandmother and does, does so by being successful in life. Like that's his sense of honor towards his family. There is a sense of family honor that he feels connected to bring peace to his solo detached lifestyle in order, in other words, to um, kind of like you know, bring meaning into his life considering how detached he is from everything. Sometimes, you know, you need some sort of connection with something. So it's his sense of honor through his family is that connection that brings him peace of mind. He finds comfort in identifying with the abstract and feeling connected in that way with the masses rather than on a personal level. He values tradition, and tradition validates him and his position within society. So I hope you enjoyed that reading about Vladimir Putin. Um, I haven't actually looked up very much about him. I, di I did look up a little video about him where I learned that he was apparently a spy um, before he was president, which is interesting. Has a lot that definitely validates the whole James Bond thing I was reading. So um, I may look up some more about Vladimir Putin. Um, he's an interesting person. Anyways. Thanks for watching, and have a good day. Bye.